2% on Friday, easing on news of the U.S. debt ceiling deal. But now all eyes are on this weekend's OPEC Plus meeting. For now, there's no clear direction if the group will announce additional cuts. Last month's move to cut around 1.16 million barrels per day came as a surprise. This as Russia's oil ex- exports have remained elevated, not slowing to the extent of the output cuts promised, pushing a rift between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Now, Blue Line Futures President Bill Baruch joins us now with what to expect from OPEC Plus this weekend and what it means for oil. Thank you for joining us this morning here. So we were getting a bit of mixed messaging about, you know, potentially people trying to short oil, that warning we got out of Saudi Arabia. But then we also have Russia saying, you know, don't don't expect any cuts. What are your expectations going into these meetings? I, I think they're going to stand pat here. Um, you know, they cut they, they announced that previous cut at the start of April and took effect in May. And, uh, you know, they haven't uh, announced another cut, a follow-up cut per se, uh, within three months of that initial cut. So I, I don't think that they're gonna change anything at this time. Um, you know, they we markets are still anticipating a, a, a deficit in the back half of this year as demand picks up and, and China growth reinvigorates. And I, I'm on board with that. So I, I think they're gonna be patient here, uh, though there is some friction growing between uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia. Um, as Russia continues to produce over that 500, uh, you know, thousand barrel per day uh, mark that they were supposed to hit on. Hey, Bill, it's Julie here. Just to kind of zoom out a little bit, we've seen oil really wavering lately. Yes, it's, we've got a little bit of a rebound today, but do you think that we're going to have a range bound situation through the summer or do you think there's going to be a breakout one way or the other, whether it's the OPEC plus meeting or something else that's a catalyst? You know, I, I do think that uh, we're we're going to see oil uh, remain buoyant. I think the, the tailwinds, you know, as I mentioned, would, would be China growth coming back on. I think we're at, at a, if not quite there, maybe some peak pessimism from from on, on the China story. Uh, and uh, Chinese manufacturing PMI gave us a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, U.S. demand remains robust, and the White House will also have to uh, look to replenish that SPR. So, you know, in the next month, you know, we're going to look at that from SPR releases to potentially having to replenish that. And I think that's going to become a tailwind uh, for for sentiment as well. Uh, and then when you get these these big washouts like we had over the past week, um, a lot of the time, if we're able to start to stabilize, you, you can quickly see traders and managers reposition. Uh, I think the the landscape within the, the equity space uh, for individual names is, is very robust right now, mm-hmm. too. I mean, there, a lot of these names are are hitting against support right now. I mean, for instance, before before the show, I, I just, uh, you know, added to things like a marathon petroleum uh, personally and and looking at, at things like that, that that there is a, a good outlook over the summer, uh, potentially improving uh, refinery margins as well. So that actually started to get to my next question is, would you be playing or or fading specific oil and gas names going into this OPEC plus meeting? And it sounds like at least one of those names caught your attention. But what's the profile that you would be looking for across some other players? Well, we look for divergences within the landscape to bring opportunity. And, you know, this week. I, I manage a commodity fund, and this week we had a, uh, a sharp move lower. And I think one of the best ways, rather than for the viewers out there, rather than looking at uh, an option skew, it may it may you know kind of gloss your eyes over talking about something like that. But you go to uh, the CME group; um, they have that Fed Watch tool that everybody knows about, but they also have an OPEC tool, uh, hmm. OPEC Watch tool, and it's now it's not as perfect as that fed watch tool i think the fed watch tool is amazing the the opec watch tool actually you know it, it too aligns off options volatility so you have a big sell off because of a, a sort of change in narrative um that that took place you go back last week saudi arabia um in, within that uh, saudi arabia energy uh, energy minister within that interview um uh, you know i think his comments were taken out of context that they were going to bring ouchies to to the to the shorts but i think he was referring back so kind of when people's heard about that. They heard about some of the rift within Russia and Saudi Arabia. We saw a big collapse uh, in oil prices. And first, that Chinese manufacturing PMI, the, the state run number on Monday was or Tuesday night was 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 a bad first read. So we had some some heavy selling. What that did was was, you know, push the option skew to to really favor the puts were were overpriced. So within that puts being overpriced, that OPEC watch tool uh, showed a probability, and still I think does, a 50-50 probability that they cut, uh, I'm sorry, that they add production or they leave unchanged. So I look for things like that being opportun- bringing opportunity where 
puts are are overpriced, you can actually look to sell some puts and buy some calls and sort of sort of risk reversal sort of move. Uh, or you know that's the way we look to play it now. As we've rebounded, I've rolled that out to more um, um, you know limited risk call spread, kind of looking into this weekend. I think there is a bit of a tailwind for crude oil to, to trade higher. But there's opportunity, you know, as you get these sharp moves within the market uh, that I think you got to be aware of. And that's how you want to look to to take advantage of that and, and then position out, you know, within your broader thesis. And our broader thesis remains that that crude oil has a pretty good shot this year to be back above eighty dollars. And how much of that is tied into what you're expecting in terms of the, the China demand side of the story? I, I think, I mean, leaning on what the IEA said uh, earlier this, well, back in May, uh, you know, they, they do expect China uh, reopening because the reopening tailwinds haven't shown up. Uh, we do think they will. And in, right as everybody gets really negative as they are currently is typically when you can't see something that starts to revert. Now, we have, again, a light at the end of the tunnel with the private Caxton survey of Chinese manufacturing PMI showing an expansion on Wednesday night. That really got crude oil started off of that floor, getting it back above $68. And now we find ourselves here back above 71. I was looking at 71 as, as a pretty big resistance. If that story continues to build tailwinds, uh, I, I think crude oil you know, could be a major driver uh, for crude oil to retest $80. The IEA seems to think so. I think OPEC Plus is, is still looking at those Chinese tailwinds. And, and China demand uh, for crude oil products uh, has remained strong within this uh, within this sort of deteriorating growth environment. So if they pick back up, I, I think that could be a pretty re a robust uh, component within a, a bullish narrative. All right, a lot to keep track on going into this OPEC Plus weekend meeting. Blue Line Futures President Bill Baruch joining us today. Thanks so much for the breakdown and the context there, Bill.